Today we're gonna make a sci-fi outboard motor, I guess. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, how's it going? Anthony Ferro here, Crate Sci-Fi. Well, I'm working on my new short film, and as always on this channel, I uh, incorporate the builds for that film in my how-to. Um, this is a fun one. So this, you know, a couple weeks ago, I had the, the introduction of the laser cutter, the Algo laser into my shop. So I did some laser cutting. I went back to some EVA foam, did the EVA foam on the laser cutter. I know that stuff you can do by hand, but I have these tools now. And in my script, it's kind of like, a, imagine like a old fishing tugboat, but in space. And the guy is old and it's, it, it's the, the, the ship is a mess. So all the time he's like messing with the engine, right? So I have a lot of instances in the script where he's like kicking the engine or rattling it or making it work. And so I needed that. Already built it, obviously, but, um. I think with this, this was a really fun one. So let's just hop right into the build. All right, so going straight into Photoshop to make a hexagon. Why? Because when in doubt, in sci-fi, you make a hexagon. <laughs> I joke, it's funny because it's true, right? So now I got to make the pattern for the fins, the heat sink, whatever it is. Again, this is just from my imagination. And like I say a lot in this channel, I just get a silhouette in mind and then try to achieve that. Here's the logo that appears on his shirt, appears in a lot of places to tie it together. And then now I'm in light burn and I'm gonna go ahead on the laser cutter and I'm gonna cut out the foam. Now this you could do by hand. This I used to do by hand for years and years. Now I have a laser cutter, so I use that. But don't yell at me, I can't afford a laser cutter. Neither could I, but now I have one and I use it. If I didn't, I would just be cutting this out with a razor. So here I have the fins, the heat sink, the silhouette that I'm imagining in my mind. I want it to be um, engine looking. And then, right, vents, because no other reason than I thought, yeah, I'd probably have vents. And then there's my uh, shop filling up with toxic fumes. And then here, um, Oh God, the laser cutter, it's so clean. And then what happens is, then your imagination kind of runs wild, right? So then I'm like, oh, I need the end caps. And these are kind of, I guess, influenced by like the old uh, Mac towers. It's kind of what I had going. So now I have all my pieces. And what I like about 3D printers and laser cutters is that you make your own pieces of your own puzzle, if that makes sense. Right, what I would do five or six years ago is I'd go to the Goodwill, get like an old blender or like a coffee maker and look for shapes, start gluing it together. But now I'm like, I can imagine the shapes and I can make them happen. Again, this is just what I've evolved to. So now I'm going to Timu because this is my online dollar store when I need something specific and I don't have a budget because I never have a budget. So here is like this LED, this lighting, I think is for like inside your car, because I know I want the inside of the engine to have like a coil. So here, I'm just measuring uh, these fins, these exhaust fins, to get a rough idea of what the inside core uh, size is going to be. Here I'm using some scrap foam that I had to, to create the core. You could use a tube, you could use PVC pipe, I would imagine. Again. When I make these uh, builds, especially the budget ones, I sit in my shop and I look behind me and I say, oh, I have EVA foam. Let me use that. If I turned around and I saw a PVC pipe, <laughs> I would be like, oh, okay. When I, when I first used to do these videos, I'd always do like a tools and supply list. But then I realized that was not accurate because that's not what I do, right? I look in my boxes and my bins and in my garbage and I'm like, oh, that'll work. And then that's what I use. And I think that's more helpful to you and it's more realistic. So now uh, I didn't burn my hands with the hot glue gun this time. So that was nice. And here I'm just using some uh, gaff tape, some black tape to sort of firm up this tube. And again, why, why black gaff tape? Because that's what was hanging on the wall. You could use duct tape, you could use electrical tape, you could use no tape. 
<laughs> I don't know why I've just got on this diatribe about using what's around you, but right, that's helpful. So here I'm just trying to figure out uh, the best way to neatly um, coil this, this LED light. And then later on in the build, I'm gonna add some uh, fairy lights, which was not what I intended to do. So here, uh, my the way I imagined it was exactly what I'm doing now. And I got this light and I had an idea, but for some reason, these lights, this light strip is not as luminous as, as I wanted it to be, but it still works visually, but I'm gonna add some additional lights later on. So now, I found with electrician, uh, electrician, electronics, because I'm not an electrician and not savvy with electronics, typically when I'm building with lights and things that turn on and off, I will typically turn them on and build around them being on because many times I've been building something and accidentally, you know, snipped a wire or shorted out a wire. So this way, it just sort of, uh, keeps me um, a a aware of if I'm <laughs> shorting something out. So now I'm just going to sand all these pieces. Um, I have the air assist on my laser, so it keeps it pretty clean, but there is some like scorching. And, you know, I just want this to accept the paint better. This is just a 220 palm sander. No, no big deal. And then I just hit it uh, with the emery cloth, typically a steel wool, scotch bright these are what i use because like most of you sanding i hate sanding and i just want to make sure that i covered the whole surface and i find that if i in my process i just do one pass with a scotch bright or steel wool and that's just sort of a safety that's the way i approach it it's a safety in case like i didn't get the whole um surface so now i'm gonna start assembling and Again, you know, I talk about this a lot. So this is edited, this is polished, this is the video I'm presenting to you. But in this moment, if you could see a thought bubble to my brain, it's basically saying, oh man, I just cut this stuff out for two days. I hope it works. Because <laughs> sometimes it doesn't. That typically what I'll do which is the, the beauty of just creating your own things. If it doesn't work, I just kind of go in a direction to make it work. So there are the super glue would probably be fine, but now I'm using hot glue. And uh, another thing I say a lot bears repeating is when I'm, you know, I'm doing these as film props, right? I tell you that all the time. So uh, if the actor can find a way to break this, the actor will immediately find a way to break it and mess up the whole day because I don't have the budget to do multiples. So what I typically do is overbuild, right? And I point that out because for you, perhaps, you know, you only need to do the super glue and that's fine. I put the hot glue because I know whoever my actor is in this short film, they're definitely <laughs> a good chance that they're going to break it. Now, each one of those spaces between the vents is where I'm gonna put the fins. So when I spray paint the base coat of this, uh, I'm gonna do like a primer black. I just wanna have the wood exposed just to give me a, a better surface to glue to. That's really all. And then here, you see that's all black now and it's starting to look like something. So now I'm less apprehensive and more like, all right, all right, this is coming together, you know, I'm, I'm cautiously excited, right? So now I'm putting on all these forms and now unintentionally, but you know, my subconscious is getting smarter. Now, if I had cut those fins, those like heat sink fins out of uh, the wood, out of the hardboard material, they probably would not have fit. But because it's EVA foam, I'm able to persuade it <laughs> to fit my form. And again, that was unintentional, but I caught a break, right? Sometimes you catch a break. And I also, when I'm building stuff, if I find I keep catching breaks, I'm like, ooh, the, uh, the prop making gods are on my side for this project. And then it emboldens me. <laughs> 
So here I just got to make a little indentation, a little window because of where I made a hole for my electronics, uh, the, the power cables to come out of. Again, getting smart in my old age. I, I foresaw that as a problem and I addressed it. So now it's starting to look like what I thought it was gonna look like. So here, don't throw anything out. So these were the offcuts from when I created um, the, the fins and then I'm like, oh, these will be a good a way to situate my core in the center and hold it in place. And again, with the foam, if my measurements are not exact, the foam, I can wiggle and wriggle it in there and uh, get it to fit. There I got my shop air, which is my favorite thing. I have a compressor. I don't use it as an airbrush. I don't use air tools. I just like to spray air and clean stuff up. I find it very satisfying. I don't know why. I highly recommend it. All right, so now just more hot glue. And here what I'm doing, so I'm, I'm aware that that um, that LED light is not as bright as I wanted it to be. So I'm sort of, before I go the, the extra mile to add more lights, I'm thinking, oh, let me, in this base part, let me add some reflective tape and that'll help uh, to illuminate the inside of this thing. So, you know, that's a, it's a good idea. But again, like I said, you'll, you'll see uh, down the road, I just go a little bit further. So now I figure, again, I'll need to be able to uh, access the lights because, as I said earlier, because this is for a film, on a film, if it can go wrong, it will go wrong. And I'm anticipating that we assemble everybody and say action, and I turn on the light in the engine here that we're building, and it won't work. <laughs> Ask me... <laughs> Ask me how I know that, because it will happen. So I am now, I measured twice off camera. I'm like, all right, committing. We're gonna glue this sucker on there. And then I'm thinking now, oh, I should have painted this first, but you know, live and learn. The other side, uh, I wanna use Velcro because again, like I said, I wanna be able to access the lights. So there, I carefully place that. We're in a perfect measurement from my CAD drawing and everything fits together perfectly. <laughs> With my engineer's brain, right? So that's all working very nicely. And then now I'm like, it's kind of what I imagined. And that is very satisfying. So here, backtracking because like I said I should have painted this ahead of time no big deal and the reason that I'm separating the foam from the wood is with the EVA foam you got to hit it with like plasti dip so I don't want to get spray paint on the EVA foam before I do a coat of plasti dip so I'm just painting that separately so here I have this is going to be the base so I'm cutting out the base and again to give it a little life hexagons and the laser cutter cut that nice. And the way you get rid of this, oh, there's my book. <laughs> I wrote a book about my process, about how I do all this stuff before I make a film. It's, all right, check out my book. Link in the description. All right, so here is the Plasti Dip, like I said. So this is gonna be for the foam. All the foam needs to get a coat of Plasti Dip before you can spray paint it. And then here's my base. I'm gonna paint that black because black primer is the way to go. And the base, this was an afterthought, and I really like it. So now I'm going to hit the whole thing with metallic, right? No uh, graphite on this one, just metallic, because I know, like I said earlier, the ship is filthy, like it's like a muffler shop, and I know that I'm going to put a lot of, lot of weathering on this. So uh, I didn't mind just using a silver spray paint for the base coat or the final coat before weathering. So here's some Super 77. You can use contact cement, super glue, I just like this. Cause on the base I wanna put, um, this is floor mat foam, just to give it a little extra, you know. It, it adds value visually 
And then it's a practical thing. So now I finally say, all right, I'm going to go with the copper lights. Now, if you remember, if you watched my console build video, I got this neat uh, orange heat tape. So my thought is I'm going to just randomly arrange the fairy lights and then hit it with some heat tape. But before I do that, I realized that my my spray glue has gotten tacky and it's time to make that happen. And then again, I have these off cuts of the foam from when I cut out my fins and I was like, oh, these will be little knuckles. And then here's an old trick I haven't done in a long time with EVA foam when I used to make armor and stuff on the channel is you just take the end of the, the sanding drum there and it looks like a rivet. And then here with the heat gun, you just seal the cells in the foam. And then I'm going to um, put this on the corners just to add a little visual interest. And it's scrap pieces and I feel good because I repurposed, right? So now that this is glued down, it's, it's almost its own guide for cutting these off. And I should say, how there's those hexagons in the corners, I did in my mind imagine, oh, that would be neat to recycle those offcut uh, hexagon pieces, make them look like fasteners or, I don't know, like gaskets, like uh, stabilizers or, or something. So, little dab of hot glue will do. And then, bum, 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 bum. I love it when a plan comes together that I thought would be a good addition and it was and then here from the console build I made this sort of warning uh, sticker plaque and I didn't put it on the console because there wasn't a place for it but I put it aside and then I was like "Ooh, this will add value caution you know nobody's gonna read that in a film but they'll in their eyes in their eyeball brain would be like oh that's a that's an industrial thing because i see that warning sign right little little cues little tips little tricks so here off camera i threaded this <laughs> very light through i think two or three times because i was trying to think backwards and upside down and uh i i didn't do so well but i finally got it so what i'm doing is i have this heat tape it's orange probably would have been easier to just use orange gel but i didn't have any but i had this next to me and i was like oh this will work so i just put them on there randomly and i'm gonna put them on the bottom and i just want those to kick just a little bit of light because when the guy's messing around with the engine there'll be a moment when i'll be off camera where he like wax it with the wrench and then i'll turn these lights on and it'll just add a little something you could do that in post, but I'd rather do it practically with $7 worth of fairy lights than, you know, four to eight hours in After Effects. So there, there you go. It's a little Christmas decoration, but like I said, once it's on set and sort of buried in a wall, I think that'll be just fine. And then the coils, you can see, right, it almost looks like a... You know like a space heater or something which is kind of what i was going for so yeah that worked and then those fairy lights they kick it just enough i might figure out a way to dim them a little bit uh maybe with some like uh uh parchment paper or something but we'll see so now i i measured the cuts for this uh base to have the engine seat in it properly and right before I put it in, I realized that, oh, I could have measured that wrong. But again, this this project was smiled on by the prop god, so it fit. <laughs> I make a joke because it doesn't always fit. So now the weathering, right? Here's where the people that love weathering get exciting, and here's where the people that hate weathering get horrified. I say this. This is a public service announcement. If you do not like weathering... You will just stop at this point and not weather if you're building one of these. Pretty simple, right? But now I'm going to slather it on because I think that silver spray paint looks like silver spray paint. 
but the reason I was happy to use it is because I knew I was going to be do, doing this. Now, if I wasn't weathering, I probably would have been more particular about the paint that I chose. So that's something to think about. So what I'm doing now is I'm just making sure that I get a nice coat of black acrylic, and that's a basic wash. And then I'm gonna go through with my black water-based oil paints because the oil paints tend to look like grease. And then there's the, the uh, burnt umber that tends to look like rust. And those I use sparingly. And you know, I always find this hard to explain. It's, it comes with trial and error when I'm doing these like little colors. Like I'll add a little, you know, this case I'm using gold and green. You always wanna just add just little flecks. Like if I didn't tell you, or you weren't watching this video, you probably wouldn't even register that there's little spots of gold and green on there, but it just breaks it up nicely and it really helps to bring it to life. And now I'm gonna use a little bit of nicotine spray just to kind of fold it all in. And then we're gonna seal it with the clear. And then there's the beauty shots, <laughs> air quotes, because it's beautifully gross. Look, oh, that looks so good. Hexagons, sci-fi. There it is in the corner. And again, I, I said this all the time, you'll never see this piece like this. It'll be on a set among, among other things. And then, yeah, happy. <laughs> yeah, right? Very happy with the way this turned out. I say that a lot, but maybe we're getting better at this. <laughs> but again, this is gonna be a very effective prop. And uh, I say this a lot, bears repeating, you know, when I do the heavy weathering, it's because it serves my purposes for on film. Maybe for your cosplay or your, you know, your your playroom or whatever, or just because you, you're a hobbyist. Maybe you don't want to do that weathering, right? So you just stop at that point. I prefer it. I think it's more obvious to me when things are made out of wood and foam when they're not weathered, right? So anyway... You know, if you follow this channel, you know I say that a lot, but I think it bears repeating. So very happy with the way this turned out. And again, when it's in the film, he'll be peeling back a, a, a panel and he'll be wrenching on this or whatever. So you're never gonna look at it the way I film it to show you the beauty shots or the way it's displayed here, right? It's always just gonna be like in passing and probably won't have that light. It'll probably be more like that. <laughs> it totally works. Very excited about this. Well, as always, I'm just here to help make sci-fi. Subscribe, leave comments. That helps these days. I don't know, next year I'll be asking you to do something else, but it really helps. I wrote a book, check out my book. And remember, I'm just here to help make sci-fi. Now let's kick it to my avatar. Hey, I'm just the avatar, but you might wanna check out this video. Maybe that video, for sure, subscribe if you haven't, and check out the merch, buy some merch, that really helps. But hey, what do I know? I'm just the avatar. Ha <laughs> ha!